Hi, so today I want to talk about something that is really important to me, and that is programming. I want to teach you how to program, because I think that programming is probably the most essential skill for anyone to pick up at this point in, in life, at this point in history, no matter how old you are, no matter how far along in your development you are, whether you're a young student or whether you're <laughs> nearing retirement. I think that understanding programming, understanding the way that computers and, and smartphones uh, function and the way that they interact with one another is super important, right? And it's uh, it's it's more less of a less of a technical still skill and more of a way of thinking. Um, so this is going to be a multi-part video series. Obviously, it's it's going to span over weeks, maybe months. I don't know how long, but the very first one is uh, just setting you up with tools and writing your basic program. So I'm going to be on Mac. Uh, you can easily do this on Windows as well. Uh, or Linux or or whatever you are. You can even do this on phones, but we're gonna do it on Mac because that's what I have. So here we are in my, uh, I've made a, a brand new user account for this and we're just gonna go ahead and open up Safari and we're gonna go to Google. And what we need to do is we need to download something called a text editor. Now, a text editor is is basically the equivalent of Microsoft Word. Um, but you use it to write programs instead of to write essays or, or whatever you write in Microsoft Word. I don't know. I don't use it very often. But um, we're gonna write. We're gonna write programs now. A program is is literally. It's it's very much like an essay. It's a, it's just text in a file. Okay. Um, but that text is a series of instructions that the computer understands. Okay. So. Uh, I don't really want to go go too in depth on that because uh, it it might get over your head. But but the basic way to think about a program is that it's it's just a a series of instructions. And uh, with that knowledge, let's get into it. Let's let's start writing a program. So we need to uh, download a text editor. There are many that you can use. Uh, I like to use one called Sublime Text. So we'll type Sublime Text three, and the very first link is download. And you can download it for your operating system. We'll download the OSX. And you can see up here, downloading. And we can start it. It'll open, checking volumes, finished. And then we can drag it into our applications folder. Um, I already have it installed, obviously. Um, so I don't need to do that. But that's literally all you need to do. And then uh, we, can, we can close up Safari. And we are going to go into Spotlight, so Command plus Space, and we'll do Sublime Text. You know, see it shows up there, and we will open it up. I just made it full screen, but I don't know if it'll actually record that, so I guess we're going to find out in post. But I'm just going to do it like this because I'm confident that it will record this. Okay, um, so what are we looking at? Well, like I said, this is like Microsoft Word. So when we type, letters come up, right? So you can type things like John Fish, you know. This is a text editor, sublime text rules, stuff like that, right? And you can save it uh, just like in, in Microsoft Word or in Pages. Uh, Command S, you just save. Uh, choose somewhere. We're going to save things to our desktop. And we'll save this file, because why not? We'll save it as, uh, as a text file. So John, and then uh, the way that you tell your computer that it's a text file is with the extension. So after the, the dot, so we'll say john.txt. That's just telling the computer this is a text file. So we'll save it. And then if we go into our desktop, you can see we have uh, john.txt. Double click it. And it opens up in another text editor called text edit and it says John Fish, this is a text editor, sublime text rules. Right? So it's just a way of making files. Uh, and it's just text files, but the, the interesting thing is that it's literally just text. And uh, you can specify the extension. And that's going to be really important because uh, by specifying the extension, you're telling the computer what programming language you're using. So with that knowledge, let's close this. We're gonna make a new file, Command N. We'll make our window big again. And before we start writing this program, I, I kind of wanna I wanna talk a little bit more uh, about what a programming language is, 
because I have to remember not everyone knows that. So a programming language is there is effectively the equivalent of, of any other language, right? Uh, if you speak French, then uh, you can communicate with other people who speak French, right? If you speak English, you can communicate with other people who speak English. Uh, if you're bilingual, so if you speak English and French or two other languages, it doesn't really matter. In Canada, we speak English and French. Um, but if you speak two languages, you can, you can communicate with both those people. And so the way that I like to think of it, it is that there are languages uh, called programming languages, and you use it to talk to computers. Okay, so the language that we're going to be using is Python, right? And so uh, the computer understands how to read Python, and we are going to learn how to write Python. And that's our way of interacting with the computer, right? And we're going we're gonna to give the computer instructions that it's going to execute, and it's going to run, and uh, it's, it, it turns out that it's super powerful because computers are good at, at a lot of things that humans aren't good at. They're also really bad at some things, but they're really good at things like math. So let's write our first program. Now, the, the very first program that, that anyone will ever have you write in any programming language is called Hello World. Um, and the idea with it is just that we want to get the computer to do something. We want it to, to talk to us in some way. Okay, um, in, we call this printing. Uh, basically, it, it means not printing like on paper, uh, but just putting text on the screen. Okay, uh, so in Python, you literally just say print, uh, and then we put these brackets, and that's just saying what we need to print. Uh, and then in quotes, we're gonna put what we want to say. So we can say, hello world. Okay, uh, we're gonna press command S, we're gonna save it as hello underscore world dot pi. You can save it as whatever you want, obviously. The important part is the dot pi at the end, right? Dot p y. That tells your computer that this is a Python file. Okay, so I'll save it. Uh, you'll notice that we get this cool syntax highlighting is what it's called. It just highlights certain words, certain colors, so they're easier to read. Um, and it's obviously not arbitrary. These, these things have meanings. Uh, this is a variable, this is a function, um, we'll get into that later, but it just makes it look pretty. <laughs> um, okay, so we have we have our program, it's called helloworld.py. Now we need to run our program. Now Sublime Text actually has uh, this built in as a feature, um, but I want to teach you how to use the terminal because it's, it's a really useful, uh, useful thing to, to know how to do. Um, and so we're gonna we're gonna go into our spotlight again, and we're gonna type terminal, and it's gonna pop this thing up. It says bash at the top. Um, we're just gonna zoom in a bunch so you can hopefully read it. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to learn a few commands before we start out. I'm getting ahead of myself. So uh, there's a few commands that are important. One is ls. Okay, my uh, my camera just just died, but we're gonna we're gonna go through with this because um, I don't really need my face to to talk about this. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna type ls, uh, and you see that that it lists out a bunch of these folders. Ls is just like list, um, and this is just like if you go into Finder, uh, <laughs> you can see that we have like downloads, documents, desktop. Uh, it corresponds to these things, right? How do we get into one of those folders? Well, uh, there's another command called cd, short for change directory. Um, and we want to get onto our desktop. So we're going to write cd, and then we'll write uh, d, v, s, like desktop, whatever. Uh, but if you start writing it and then you hit tab, it'll auto-complete it for you, which is super useful. All right, so now you see that that is changed there. It now says desktop there. Uh, this is telling you your current working directory. Um, and then we're going to type ls again. And now you see that the files that we made earlier are actually on here. Okay, so now we need to run it. So if you're on, if you're on Mac, this should already be installed. You should just be able to write Python. And it'll show up with this Python 2.7 point something. Um, in this tutorial, we're going to be using Python 3. This might not be installed on your computer already. I don't know if it comes with uh, new versions of Mac OS X. 
Um, as you can see, Python 3.6.1, it's just a different version. There's just a few things that are different. Uh, if it's not installed on your computer, you're just gonna go into Safari, not Sublime Text, you'll go into Safari. Uh, you'll go to python.org slash downloads, and you will install the latest version of Python for Mac OS X, Python 3.6.1, just install it like any other program. And then you should get Python 3. Wicked. So, all we need to do now to run our very first program is we just need to type Python 3, hello, and then uh, we can press tab again for autocomplete, hello world.py. And as you can see, it prints out the string that we put on there. And that's super cool. Uh, we, can, we can change this. We can say, hello, John. We'll run that program again. You can press the up arrow key to run the, to put the previous command into your, uh, your current command. So we'll do that. Now it says, hello, John. We can also do things like math in here. So we can do two times two. It says four. Uh, we could do a lot of other things. Uh, we could do two to the power of 10. Whoops. We can do two to the power of 10. 1024. We can do two to the power of 100. Whoa, that's super crazy. You can't do that on most calculators. So, as you can kind of start to see, uh, programming is going to become super useful. It's, it's going to have a lot of power. Uh, but this video has already gone over uh, 11, 12 minutes, um, and I needed to edit it together because it's 9.31 at night. So, I'm going to do that now. Um, yeah, this is, this is really awkward because my camera stopped working, but uh, this is like the fourth or fifth time that I've tried to record this video, so... Uh, sorry about that, but in the in the next video, we're going to cover things like uh, like variables. We're going to cover things like if statements. We're going to cover things like loops. I don't know how I'm going to break these videos up just yet, but um, these are all things that are going to be coming. And then we're going to get into uh, some more advanced projects, um, maybe some more advanced algorithms. There's a lot that you can do. This is a really crazy advanced world. So I'm going to cut the video off there. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope that that this is something that that a lot of you will will start to do, and a lot of you will pick up even just a little bit of, um, because it's super valuable. Even to understand what someone means when they say programming is really valuable to a lot of people. So, thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for the next video.